given us a bit more time to get things together, but never changed our determination to do whatever we can, whenever together, and by whatever means possible to get people where they need to go. I know Kim and Nikki will have to tell you more about their programs. And so I just say, welcome. We're grateful for your interest, your support, and sorry that we cannot be face to face, but happy you are all still with us. Now, um, Amy, who has functioned as our treasurer, Amy Conlon, for the last year, um, will talk about our financial report. Amy? Thank you, Kathy. Um, as Kathy said, I'm Amy Conley. Um, some of you know me as the United Way Director, but today I am wearing my outgoing treasurer hat, and I am pleased to present the 2020 financial highlights to you. So Dortrans income comes from a variety of sources, including federal and state grants, an annual fundraising event in a non-COVID year, <laughs> various grants, private donations, and income designated to the many programs that have now become part of Dortran. In 2020, Dortran did receive a PPP loan that is not included in the numbers that I'm going to share with you today because we did not close out that grant, or excuse me, that loan until 2021. This is on the advisement of our accounting firm. So that loan though was forgiven in full in 2021. So back to 2020, our income was $235,820,000.91. Our expenses include dollars to the programs that are part of Dortran. So the variety of programs you're gonna hear about today, those dollars are all within that Dortran income and expense. Other expenses include our dollars invested in savings and the variety of costs associated with running our business, including our staff, and the costs of what the IRS considers programs and services. Items included in the programs and services category include the expenses for the Peninsula Transportation Coalition that we collaborate with as the fiscal agent and a variety of staff time spent attending different meetings within our community, networking throughout the county and the state and continuing education. Nikki and Kim have spent their time working with clients to find the most affordable and available and accessible transportation options, either within a Dortran program or referrals to many of our community partners in the area of transportation. They continue to track unmet needs of our community and do the research to bring additional services to our community as needed. Those expenses, for 2020 total $220,947.34. So an income of 14,900 is where we ended the year. We ended 2020 with $66,000 in our money market and around $42,000 in our fund invested with the Door, Communi Door County Community Foundation. Man, Casey and John, I said your name enough times in the last year, you think that one would have just rolled off my tongue, right? $42,000 approximately invested in the Door County Community Foundation. It is important that we keep a reserve pool of funds as our two largest funding sources are through WSDOT. And those are reimbursable grants, meaning we pay out the funds in advance, we submit the reimbursement and we wait. Um, so sometimes it is, you know, we turn in the first quarter reimbursement at the end of that first quarter, beginning of second quarter, and receive that payment at the end of the third quarter. So it's very important to us to always have a good amount of cash on reserve to handle that cash flow situation. Those grants have become very popular throughout the last few years. Um, when Pam was with us, she did a great job of going around to other communities in the state and teaching them about the work of Dortran. This, however, maybe bit us in the butt a little bit. Um, the more transportation programs there are in the state, applying for those dollars through WSDOT becomes more competitive and less dollars available to us here in Door County which is why our other fundraising needs are so important. 
If you'd like a detailed breakdown of the income and expense for Dortran, you can contact Nikki or Kim at the Dortran office. Hawkins Ash CPAs is currently contracted by Dortran to do our annual financial review. If anyone is interested in receiving a copy of the financial review, please contact Nikki at the Dortran office. This will be available by late May and will also be on our website. Thank you very much. Nikki? Good morning. I'm gonna just introduce our guest speaker today. We have Beth Wartella coming from the Veterans Officer of Door County, the Veterans Service Office. Um, Beth served as the Assistant County Veterans Service Officer for four years prior to becoming the County Veterans Service Officer. Beth grew up in Door County area and graduated from Algoma High School in 2003. She continued her education at St. Norbert College and has earned degrees from American Military University and the University of Wisconsin Green Bay. From 2008 to 2011, Beth served in the United States Navy as a Master at Arms Military Police, where she gained experience in law enforcement, anti-terrorism training, and homeland security. Beth enjoys painting, watercolors, fishing, and golfing in her free time. Please welcome Beth Bartella. Thank you, Nikki, for inviting me to be the guest speaker today. Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah. I see a lot of familiar faces, but for those of you that don't know, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a background. Uh, the state of Wisconsin is quite unique in regards to the attention and support it provides those who are currently serving in the military or are designated as veterans. It is written into the Wisconsin state statutes that all 72 counties and the 11 federally recognized tribes must provide an office and staff entirely dedicated to assisting veterans and their family members in obtaining the benefits they are entitled to. If you take the time to look at other states throughout our nation and what benefits and services they provide their veterans, some, in my opinion, are severely lacking in comparison to our state. The state of Wisconsin also provides funding through grants that enable the county veteran service offices to operate in various capacities to assist and advocate for veterans. One of the grants we apply for and receive each year is exclusively used to support our county's veterans transportation program, which is operated and managed by the Dortran staff. The groundwork and logistics for the Veterans Volunteer Transportation Program operated through Dortran was laid out well before I started working for the county, yet has become an integral part of my job. I frequently hear from Kim or Nikki regarding a potential scheduled ride, whether it is verifying the individual is a veteran or brainstorming and accommodating special requests the dedication and reliability that Nikki and Kim have continued to provide has remained constant during my seven years in the Veteran Service Office. The ongoing cooperation between the Dortran staff members and my office is one of the more satisfying community partnerships I have established while working for the county. Imagine with me for a moment that the severe glaucoma in your eyes, the painful neuropathy in your feet, and the sporadic tremoring in your hands prevents you from driving long distances. You have been advised by your doctor that you should limit your driving for the safety of yourself and others. If that isn't disheartening enough, imagine that you live in a rural area where public transportation is not available and the closest medical facility is over an hour's drive. You become more aware and concerned about your ongoing health conditions and the frequency of your doctor appointments and fear that you may not be able to arrange dependable transportation. This is not hard to imagine for some. 
In our county, this is an actual dilemma that many of our veterans will encounter. This is the reason why DoorTran has been such a beneficial asset to our community over the past 15 years. When veterans learn about the volunteer transportation program, it alleviates their anxieties and provides them with a peace of mind regarding their healthcare needs and overall quality of life. With nearly 2,500 veterans currently residing in the county, the transportation services provided by DoorTran are imperative to the overall mobility and quality of life for many. Throughout the past year, during a time of uncertainty and continual changes, the DoorTran team has continued to seamlessly arrange transportation to our veterans. At a point in time where our veteran suicide rates are the highest they have ever been, and we are seeing the pinnacle of severe health conditions diagnosed in Vietnam veterans, DoorTran is detrimental to the overall physical and mental health of the veterans who currently reside in Door County. It is with awe and appreciation that I commend the DoorTran staff for their continual knowledge and expertise of scheduling rides and obtaining volunteer drivers for the volunteer transportation programs. Thank you, Nikki, Kim, Pam, and all the board members and volunteers that continually take the time to contribute to this program. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. We appreciate your kind words. <laughs> so I have next up, Kim. She's going to give us some information about her programs and technical difficulties as we're sharing an office. So. Good morning, everybody. So you can see, if, if you've got your cameras up, you can see I'm at my desk and now I'm at Nis Nikki's desk too. I'm, I'm pretty magical that way. Yep, so um, so uh, basically I wanted to start out with looking at 2020 by the numbers. It definitely was a smaller year than it has been in the past. The countywide had 946 trips, which is an overall reduction in rides by 25%. And the VET program was down to just 72 rides, which is down quite a bit. Um, these riders are coming. 9% of these trips are from residents that are living south of Sturgeon Bay. 29% were trips that are residents of Sturgeon Bay. And a whopping 59% of trips were from residents north of Sturgeon Bay. 8% of those were from Washington Island. And 4% were what we call a personal care attendant. That's someone that rode along with the person that had the appointment to help take care of them and, and work with them through their appointment. And as much fun as numbers are, and they're, they're really not, um, in showing that we are still here and filling the needs of many, they don't reflect the story and the reality of what 2020 was. The year 2020 was off to a great start in terms of numbers. We were setting new record highs in demand for the help we offer in getting rides and people to where they need to be. But 2020 also included stay in place, the shutdown of many businesses, quarantine from our family and friends, and many months of medical facilities working on only the most critical appointments. Many of our drivers have health conditions and most are over the age of 65. With this in mind, we went from a driver pool of 39 down to just four drivers that took trips in April. Those drivers were Jim Connup, Stan Whiteman, Bruce Smith, and Keith and Vivian Nina. And with an additional three, Dan Lindner, Dan Atharp Cratch, and Mike Vaness that helped in May. In June, we were back up to 14 drivers, but the number of trips was also creeping back up. Washington Island was without the help of their volunteer transportation program for several months and relied on our drivers to help with their transportation needs. Although we strive to have the closest driver to riders handle a trip, this was not always the case in 2020. Because of the limited number of drivers available and often multiple trips on the same day, our drivers were spending a bit more time on the road with more unloaded miles. Every single trip we take is important and every single driver is important, whether they have taken one trip or 50 trips. But I wanted to have a huge thank you going out to those drivers that were able to keep things going even during the shutdown. 
There were trips to doctor's appointments and a few to grocery stories, but none for just the sake of getting out or making plans to spend time with someone. That was until October 9th, when for just one week, the residents of a nursing home in Kiwani were allowed visitors. I am here to tell you, and I'm getting goosebumps as I'm reading this, sorry. Um, it was just the most fantastic thing. The writer wanted to go see his longtime friend and love, and the nursing home opened for that one week. He made an appointment and was able to get in and see her for her birthday. The very next day, the nursing home shut its doors again to visitors. I'm also very happy to start scheduling those visits to the Green Bay VA and others that had been other clinics that had been on hold for months deemed as not critical. I can't even imagine having to wait months to just to get my hearing aids fixed so that I can even talk on the phone to reach out to someone that way when we were no longer allowed to visit. Helping to get people back to their vaccination appointments and others is an exciting thing as we work to get our doors open and time with family and friends again. In 2020, we even started a new program. Through permission from the transportation grants that we already had secured, we were able to begin a riderless transport program that allows us to do contact delivery or contactless deliveries for those receiving food from the local pantries, farmers to families and YMCA meals. In 2021, we also received a grant from Door County Community Foundation that allows us to continue this and support trips to riders who need help getting to their COVID vaccinations. However, that'll be more details coming in next year's meeting. I am happy to say that we have some plans in place for office hours in Sister Bay. We will start meeting with folks at the NWTC building in Sister Bay. Some other great news is our pool of drivers is starting to grow again, and we are now up to 41 drivers. And I see one of our new drivers is on the meeting with us today. Um, we could always use more, but I'm hopeful as things open up and people get out, we will have people more comfortable with giving rides again. As always, I can't say enough about the wonderful volunteers that I work with. They always come through and take care of our folks that need them. Without their dedication and support, my job would be impossible. Thanks to each of my drivers and to each of the board members that helped to make Dortran what it is. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Okay. Coming on back. So once again, thank you for coming out to the Dortran meeting. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I am Nikki Voigt. I have been with Dortran for 10 years. After Pam's departure, we did go without a director for a short period of time. I felt I was up to the challenge and submitted my resume. I wanna thank the board of directors for trusting in me to keeping the ship afloat. At this time, I would like to introduce the board of directors. When you hear your name, please wave so those in attendance may put a face to the name. We have President Kathy Wagner. Past president, outgoing Stan Whiteman. He might be on another page. Interim vice president, Marty Olenichak. Treasurer, Nancy Doust, and she could not be here today. Secretary, Pam Bush. <laughs> and we have directors, Aaron LeClaire, Amy Conley. Betsy Bayer, and she is not here. Candace Dart could not be here today. Christine Anderson. Ken Glasheen. Linda Weisensell. Louise Hausen. Michael Morris. And Tia Belisle. She could not be with us either until 10 o'clock this morning. So. Um, also introduce staff Kim Gilson, who you already heard from. Um, Kim has taken on many extra hours and many more tasks over this past year plus, and I cannot thank her enough for being my biggest cheerleader. I'm proud of all the accomplishments that Dortran has had over the years. 2020 was like no other. When the country was abruptly shut down due to the virus, we pushed forward. Transportation is considered essential, and there was no shutdown for us. It gave me an opportunity to learn the many parts of my new role, and it gave Kim a chance to take on some of those tasks that had been on the back burner. 
I like to talk about the fact that when I started, I had no idea the many transportation barriers that our friends and neighbors faced. I pointed out at every opportunity that I can because many of you may not have thought about it either. I support public transportation and believe everyone deserves the same opportunities. I urge all of you to support public transportation as well, whether it's getting on door-to-door -door rides in Door County Connect, volunteering or supporting us monetarily, or just being a driver and an advocate for everyone, an ambassador. All of it matters and all of it has value. Our program stats for 2020 were quite impressive considering. We fielded over 5,000 phone calls, totaling 18,657 minutes. That averages four minutes a call or 38 days. We registered 72 new voucher clients and provided 1,350 rides through that program, saving our community members almost $12,500. Gas vouchers tracked just 88 rides in 2020. Those are employment transportation and there wasn't too many people that in that industry that were um, needing assistance at that point because they were not maybe getting to work. Our grant program assisted five households averaging $483 each. That's the repair grant for vehicles. Um, and those repair grants averaged, uh, pardon me, $2,483. And it, um, saving the clients over $2,400, pardon me. We closed seven purchase and repair loans averaging $2,250. Many of you have heard me talk about the loan program, program before. One of my clients who could not be here today wrote a beautiful testament of what the program means to her and her family. She writes, this program is an absolute lifesaver. As a family of six, it's so hard to finance a vehicle with affordable monthly payments and Dortran has made the impossible possible. The care and support shown by the program and staff is unmatched in my opinion. If we have an issue arise, instead of receiving late fees, staff is understanding and works with us to defer a payment if necessary. Not having to worry about having a reliable vehicle eliminates so much stress from our lives. We couldn't be more grateful. I had another client who we served quite a few years ago with the loan program, and his comment to me resonates quite often. He said that 1998 Pontiac G6 changed my life. I'm honored, honored to be able to serve our fellow community members and I hope to continue to be, do so in 2020. Uh, continue to be able to do so. In early 2019, we began conversations with a group of individuals and business owners in Northern Door County, who at the time identified themselves as Peninsula Transit Coalition. They had been meeting for quite some time regarding issues with parking, congestion, employment, transportation, safe rides, et cetera. We became their fiscal agent late in 2019, and in order to avoid further confusion about transportation initiatives in Door County, they have become an arm of Dortran. In order to better identify their mission, they are now known as the Peninsula Transportation Coalition. Although they are volunteer run at this time, there could certainly be growth in the future. This is a wonderful group of people, and a bit later you'll hear from Louise Hausen regarding their efforts. I would like to take a minute to let you know of a few ways you can help Dortran by doing the things you typically do already. Mark your calendars for the week of May 10th to the 14th. Concretes for a cause at Culvert, Culver's. $1 for every concrete mixer purchased that week will go to Dortran. Followed up by Culver's share night on Tuesday, May 18th. Between 5 and 8 p.m., part of your order total will be donated to Dortran. July and August will be a pay at the pump Number six at Doorstop Amico and Doortran will be the recipient at that community pump. So at this time, I would like to turn it over to Louise Hausen. She is the spokesperson for the Peninsula Transportation Coalition and the community coordinator for Sturgeon Bay, uh, pardon me, Sister Bay Advancement Association. Louise. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Um, so just briefly, um, I will um, just ground you in, in who we are, the Peninsula uh, Transport, Transportation Coalition and what our goal is. Uh, so the vision of the uh, Door County Peninsula Transportation Coalition is to start with a community to community service, fixed route service, collaborating with Dortran and the Peninsula Transit Coalition. Um, it is our goal to build a system complementary to what already exists and ultimately grow that into a countywide service. 
And so then I'll let you know who is who is the Peninsula Transport Transportation Coalition in collaboration with DoorTran. Those members are myself, Miles Danhausen, Mike Holmes, who is the owner of Trixie's and um, uh, Trixie's Taco Cerveza and um, Wickman House, Dave Elliott, um, the, the publisher of Peninsula Pulse, Kathy Wagner, our president, Nikki Voigt, our executive director, Steve Grutzmacher, who also works at the Pulse, and Pam Bush. Um, I'll talk a little bit about, we, we are looking to um, bring in more members from, from, the, from the communities. So what have we been doing? Um, <clears throat> since we were, since we became part of DoorTran, and that is with September of 2020, and we really started talking together as a group about two years ago. So since, um, since we began working with DoorTram, we have um, conducted three meetings uh, with individual communities. We started with the Fish Creek Civic Association. So the Civic Association is much is exactly the same type of organization as the organization that I that I am the director of, and that is the Sister Bay Advancement Association. So each individual community and village um, in village community town in in the Indoor County has um, a, an organization like ours. We function as a hybrid. Um, so we're sort of a chamber of commerce. We are a chamber of commerce. We're we're uh, we are membership based. And then we're also, we are also your visitor center. So we maintain a bricks and mortar visitor center. People come in, wanna know what to do. Um, we, we create and execute all the festivals and events and we advocate for um, our members. So um, we felt that the smartest way to, uh, to, to, make, to get this going and to get a community to community um, system going was to go to each individual community and talk to them about um, what our mission is as the Peninsula Transit Coalition and also to talk to them about what we've done in Sister Bay. So a brief overview of what we did in Sister but we've done in Sister Bay. In 2019, we put into service a 14 passenger bus, which we acquired from my dear friend, Joe Kresbach. And <laughs> Hello, Joe. Uh, this was the former ADRC bus. So we put that into service in, we, we, we acquired it in 2018. We put it into service in 2019. It is 14 passengers. It is fare free. At that time, and for 2019, it ran from 11 in the morning until two o'clock in the morning. Um, it's a fairly short route. It only ran in Sister Bay. It didn't go any further south than Nordic and north and, and no further north than JJ's. It ran from Memorial Day through, I shouldn't say that, it ran July 1st through Fall Festival. Um, and it was only weekends, again, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, sometimes we adjusted to Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Nonetheless, in that period of time, we, wrote, we, um, we drove 5,700 people. Um, our ridership was dominantly, and I dominant is the dominant word, in the evenings. Um, the, the model for that particular bus um, and it, it was not in service in 2020 because of COVID. It will be back in service in 2021. It will start Memorial Day. It'll run through Fall Festival. Uh, the model, we, we entered into an operating agreement with the village of Sister Bay. So the village, uh, it is a village vehicle and the employees, meaning the drivers, are village employees. And uh, we, the Sister Bay Advancement Association, operate it. So myself and, um, and our director of marketing operate it. So the, the drivers report to us. We have two really great drivers and um, it's up to us to operate it. Um, it's not, you know, it's, it's a bit of a, it, it can be a bit of a challenge, but it's not hard. So our mission was to let my fellow coordinators, I'm a community coordinators, and their boards know this is what we did. This is the real world you know, this is our experience with it. This is how, it, this is what our results were. Um, you know, first season out, this is what happened. Um, we did this in conjunction with, by the way, when we put this all together with a woman named Sophie Parr. Sophie Parr has experience in the transportation industry. She worked for the city of Duluth in their transportation department before she joined us for a couple of years. She wrote and got a $1.8 million uh, grant to revise their fare system. 
So we knew what we didn't know. And we contacted Sophie, who is now living here full time, but had been coming up here for years and years as a, as a child and with her family. She created, the, she created the route for us, but what she also did for the Peninsula Transit a Coalition was she designed a couple of different routes for a countywide system. And she also designed routes for each individual community. So um, we, and we paid for her to do that through um, Dortran who went to the community to the community foundation to request a grant to pay for Sophie doing all of this work for us. And so thanks to the generosity of Dortran in partnering with us, and then thanks to the generosity of the community foundation, we, we were able to fund an expert to help us design routes that were efficient, made sense, and would work, would be successful. Um, so fast forward, first, first community we went to was the Fish Creek Civic Association. That would be Gibraltar Township. They had an interest in putting um, a bus into service. Next one we went to was the Egg Harbor Business Association, village of Egg Harbor, not town. And the last one we went to was the Ephraim Business Council. I would say two of the three are extremely interested. Egg Harbor, still some issues, you know, they've got a lot of issues there with parking and things like that. I'm sure a lot of people would be relatively familiar with that. We need to revisit. So um, our conversations with them were, uh, this is who the PTC is. This is what we want to do. The long-term vision is a countywide system. And this is what we've done so far. We will help you with everything. We have a route. We can help you with the operation, what, we're, what our experience is with the operation piece. And Sophie will help you. And we will do our best to fund Sophie. We have the route for you. You can take a look at, you can take a look at um, the route and see what you think. The big thing is, you know, the capital expense of finding a bus. So um, we also, when we spoke with them said, this is a 2022 um, opportunity as much as we would love for it to be 2021 because they obviously have to go back to their village boards or, or town boards to get funding. Um, if they were, to, if they were to enter into an operational, you know, into an uh, agreement, much as we've done in Sister Bay, so our next, our next goal, we go to Liberty Grove in May, and we'll go to Bailey's Harbor in May, possibly June, and we'll see where that takes us. So that's where we are at the moment. We have to, I have to say personally, thank you very, very much to the support of Dortran, of Pam Bush, um, in, in particular, who was, who has been with the PTC from day one. We brought her in because of her expertise before she even became part of the county. To Joe, who was um, who, the very part of a very teeny little group of five people sitting around a table to help us. And to Nikki, who continues to be on the PTC board as does, as does um, Kathy and Pam, to just give us some guidance because um, being new to the transportation uh, sector and, and, and industry, it's, it's, very, it's very complex. And as you know, a, a lay person who's not familiar with this at all, it's very confusing. And in terms of how to get funding and how to not step on um, door trans toes, how not to step on a bunch of other toes and how to maximize um, the opportunity for all of us in Door County to get a public transportation system that we deserve. So questions. Okay. Thank you so much, Louise. It's always good to refresh everyone's memories if you have heard it before and introduce the concept if you haven't. So we're gonna go ahead now and turn the presentation over to Pam. And I think this might be where she's gonna share her screen. Good morning, everybody. Nikki and I practiced this, so it should work very well. I wasn't going or to tell them that. Or not. Can you guys see my screen or no? Yeah. Post disabled attendee screen sharing. I think you have to do something, Nikki. Try it now. Okay. All right. Can everybody see it, Nikki? Nope. 
All right. Well, there went practicing, huh? Yeah, I'm not liking that. No, I'm, I'm telling it to share. Try it. It's thinking. Try it, one more so try it again. Yeah. Yesterday it was so smooth. Oh, there we go. There we go. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, put together a little PowerPoint so I could kind of stand task and stand time for everybody. But looks like we've got a great group of attendees. Um, so hi, everybody. Um, as many of you know, and what's been mentioned um, earlier in this meeting, um, I work, I'm with the Door County Transportation Department um, as their transportation manager, which is a new department, new position that the county implemented in late 2019. Um, so just to give you an overview of what we've been up to on the screen right now, we're giving you a little picture of what vehicles now look like. This was a pretty recent happening um, as far as an update to the door-to-door -door vehicles and also our ADRC um, slash senior bus vehicles. So the door-to-door -door rides, we removed some graphics on the windows, which the riders absolutely love. And we added the Door County Connect logo to the door-to-door -door system. And then we renamed the ADRC service as Door County Connect. So in essence, um, you've got a Door County Transportation Department that is now called Door County Connect Public Transit. Within that system, we have um, Door County Connect and door-to-door -door rides. Some services that we provide, just an overview, um, Door County Connect door-to-door -door ride system. It is a shared ride taxi. The county has a contract with Abbey Vans to um, provide the trip. So they have hire the driver, schedule the rides, take care of all of that end of this service. Um, we provide service through door-to-door -door in almost all of Dirk County um, based on zones. In the different zones, <clears throat> excuse me, we have different service times and things like that in um, the primary or the most busy service areas, which is Stur Sturgeon Bay and the surrounding areas we have service up to seven days per week. Um, the fleet has grown a bit. Um, we've got two ambulatory seven passenger vans out there in addition to six wheelchair accessible vans. Um, based on demand um, leads to when those vans are on the road. So there are times where perhaps only two vans are on the road. And then there are times where the ridership is higher where all of the vans are on the road. Um, and you'll see the ride stats. Obviously, our trips were down in 2020 due to COVID. Um, so we um, still had almost 32,000 trips in 2020 with the door-to-door -door system, hey, Pam, which is a, a higher percentage. Pam, yeah. can I just interrupt, yeah. interrupt you real quick? Can you hit from the beginning on your slideshow? Because they're not advancing slides. And you oh. refer to those slide ride numbers, and we don't have those. Oh, I thought I hit from the beginning, let me, yeah. I'm sorry, everybody. All I can see is my PowerPoint, so I don't know that's happening to you. There you go, yep, we got her, perfect. Now can you? Yes. Okay, all right. Now you're seeing the services screen, Nikki? Yes, we are. Okay, all right, sorry, thank everybody. No, thank you. Um, yeah. so, on to Door County Connect. Again, it was formerly called um, ADRC Bus Van Service. Um, prior to that, it was named the Senior Bus. Um, it is now called Door County Connect. Our hope with that name change is that um, the general public will, will see that system as a public transit system as it is, rather than a service um, specific for um, aging and disability um, resources and things like that. Um, Primary service area for Door County Connect is in the city of Sturgeon Bay. We can go into an extended area up to 10 miles from the ADRC, um, different fare structure for that, um, but staying within um, what Door to Door does as well. We operate um, the Door County Connect system Monday through Friday. Um, in that service, we've got the 14 passenger bus and then one van, both are wheelchair accessible. Um, we do share the wheelchair van with Dortran, 
who operates the veteran transportation program that both Nikki and um, Beth spoke of earlier. So that service um, does share our van and we're happy to continue to do that with Dortran. Um, the Door County Connect service um, took quite a hit with ridership in 2020 due to COVID. Um, as you can see, we're at about 50% of where we were at in 2019, in addition to actually furloughing our driver, driver for about a month um, in April, I believe it was 2020. Um, we still got a couple of things accomplished in 2020. Um, fare increases happened. Um, this was um, done, all the work to that was done by Joe and his team um, prior to my coming over to the county. Um, all of the riders um, felt that that fare increase was fair. So we continued that into 2021. Um, we were really hoping on the county's end of things to include, in increase rider revenue with that increase. However, with ridership being down due to COVID, um, we did end up lower as far as revenue than prior. However, um, the public transit system did receive CARES Act funding um, to cover the loss in fares. So the county was able to recoup um, their losses from January 20 to the end of um, 2020. We implemented a dispatch software system. Um, prior to um, this, it was um, difficult to have um, staff schedule trips for the ADRC slash Door County Connect system um, based on time. Um, so we've now in, um, implemented dispatch software where I or the driver can schedule rides and then Rather than another staff person entering in the ride completed stats, um, that is automatically calculated. So we'll actually be saving in staff hours about $10,000 this year by implementing that software. Um, it's um, not anything that we signed a license for. Um, again, many of you that have been um, in this for a while, we know that at some point central dispatch was a goal. Um, so the system that we are currently using, we are not um, tied into. And it's affordable, which is great. I already talked about the rebranding um, system. And um, we also had a change in staff. We had a 20-year driver um, for the ADRC system. And um, we, so we've seen him retire. And we've got a new full-time driver that the riders um, appreciate as well. We've got a couple of goals for this year. Um, new payment systems um, in late 2020, I believe it was door-to-door -door rides already implemented a prepayment system that folks can access on their website. It also has some scheduling features if folks don't wanna schedule their rides by phone, which has been helpful for many riders. Um, the Door County Connect system transitioned from a gift certificate system to tickets or cash as well. Um, and riders um, really appreciate that a lot. It's easier for them to plan their transportation budget, um, buy the tickets, and then they're set for the month kind of thing. It also met um, our needs for COVID as far as trying to reduce um, the transactions of paper or money and things like that. So this way, one rider's turning in a ticket and um, that's it. Rebranding continued. Um, we've got the vehicles rebranded. There's a couple more things that we need to do with that project. Um, right now I'm working with the county's tech department on merging the door-to-door -door rides website with um, the Door County Connect page um, into the county website, which will be a rather large cost savings going forward. So that is underway at this point in time. Um, I'm also working with a marketing vendor on the door-to-door -door rides brochure so that it includes Door County Connect services and also um, perhaps trying to make it less confusing with the zone and um, mapping information. So those items are a work in progress. Um, flexible fixed route. That's probably the biggest thing right Pam, now. Pam, um, Pam, yep. can I interrupt yeah. again you need to advance the slides i'm getting some messages that they can't see your presentation again okay. wondering if this will be available to everyone um, via email would you be able to follow up with that 
Yes, absolutely. I can send that to you, Nikki. I'm just going to go ahead and end show. And if my slides look smaller, I think we'll have to deal with that because I'm advancing them. I'm at 2021 goals continued. Oh, now it's on um, there. Yeah, so there. you'll just see a smaller version. I had it blow into the full page. So maybe that was the issue. Okay. Thanks, okay. everybody. Are you doing okay? All right. Um, so basically, um, the last thing I want to mention is the flexible fixed route that we're working to put together. Um, the name of that route will be the connector link. Um, we have three bus stop sponsors, the Door County Medical Center, Econo Foods and Pick and Save. <clears throat> For some of you who um, have heard the consultant reports, um, Dortran um, worked with SRF Consulting and the county worked with um, Larson and Associates um, between 2017 and 2018. Both of those um, consultants had suggested doing some sort of shoppers link or something like that between um, high ridership areas, such as multi-family um, complexes, apartment buildings, things like that, and then also to areas um, where people were going the most. So um, I worked on connecting with um, high ridership businesses, and um, three of them came forward as far as being bus stop sponsors and contributing um, funding towards this system. And then we're look, working with four apartment complexes. We'll be traveling through Thunder Hill Estates and making stops at the ADRC. Um, in addition to our bus stop sponsors, there will be no cost to riders of this service. It will operate every Monday from about 8.15 to about 4.15. Um, the route will be, um, it is mapped out. We're just finalizing the times right now for the bus stop signs. Um, and it will be launching in May. Um, it's looking more like May 12th at this point in time. We we're hoping for the 5th. Um, but we, once we launch it, we wanna make sure that it's launched correctly. The biggest need for us right now is volunteer drivers and aides. In order to add this service to our system, um, it would need to be with the help of volunteers. So if you or anyone you know may be interested, please have them give me a call, 746-5982, and I'd be more than happy to share more information with them. And I think the next one um, is simply questions and contact information. Um, you know, if anybody has any questions now or if they wanna follow up with me later, please do so. Thank you, Pam. That's a great inter uh, interview of how much the services are growing here. And, and it speaks to the volumes of what you did early in the years of Dortran that is now 40,000 years of, or 40,000 rides of door to door and Door County Connect. So yay, Pam. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. So now we're going to move on to Kathy and Kim are going to present some awards. We'll start with Kathy. And you are muted, Kathy. Thank you. Uh, there we go. So because we didn't have an annual meeting last year, there was no time to publicly acknowledge with all of our partners the debt of gratitude we owe to Pam Bush. We did celebrate her position with the county back in November of 2019, but it should go into our annual meeting minutes that Pam brought us to where we are at by the end of 2019. It's through her hard work that Dortran is what it is and we carry that forward. That said, we did not want to lose Pam's depth and breadth of knowledge. So she remains on the board in a position reserved for the county. I want to acknowledge Kim and Nikki's commitment to the volunteer drivers. Um, we have received handmade masks, antimicrobial sanitizer, gloves, hand sanitizer, and special treats. At Christmas, an elf arrived at our door with hot cocoa and these mugs for us. We've um, chocolates as well. We've received car wash coupons and last week, a bookmark done in conjunction with a Girl Scout troop to recognize Volunteer Week. Nikki, I'm sure that was Madison's troop, right? It was. <laughs> they had fun doing it. Well, everything has been very much appreciated and you guys have done a terrific job. Now, Stan Whiteman is our outgoing president and we would have acknowledged his presidency last year 
course, always the president stays on as a past president. Um, Stan has stayed on as past president and has been with Dortran for 10 years. He began driving in 2012 and came onto the board in 2015. The start of 2020 was a bit of a struggle for us as we've all uh, been affected, but Stan weathered the storm and he transitioned to his past president position in April of last year. We owe him a big debt of gratitude for his service, both on the board and as a volunteer and veteran program driver. Outgoing board members are Christine Anderson representing Washington Island, who has served as our secretary this past year and Amy Conley, who has served in the treasurer capacity this past year. But in truth, I think Amy has held every position imaginable. Amy has more knowledge and history of this organization just as Pam does. And thank goodness I know where she works and have her on speed dial. Um, cannot thank these women enough for their time and their service. And they both stayed on an extra year um, to help us. Last year, we also brought on board Linda Weisensell, who lives here in Sturgeon Bay with her husband, Tom. Linda taught primary school for many years before transitioning into the financial advisory world. She and Tom have been in Door County for 10 years and just recently relocated to Sturgeon Bay from Fish Creek. Louise Housen, as Louise mentioned, is the community coordinator for Sister Bay Advancement Association. She's been here since 2017. With a varied background, most of her previous career has been in marketing, event planning, and from a personal relationship, I know that building relationships is important to her. She founded and operated an in-home supportive care business for three years. Louise is also part of the founding team for the PTC. This year, we added Candace Dart, who until 2019 worked for the United Way as the coordinator for Door County Partnership for Children and Families. She's currently serving in her capacity as mom for her young children, but happy to be involved in the community. We also welcome Ken Glasheen, who is a CPA and the Chief Financial Officer for Sunshine Resources in Sturgeon Bay. Ken spent 28 years in the banking world. He and his wife, Tracy, have four children. And Tina Belial came aboard this year. Tia is a very involved young woman in many nonprofits and volunteer extraordinaire on projects about which she is passionate. She has done much public speaking and is currently the president-elect of the Rotary Club. She also manages the firm her family built Maytax Services. Tia is grounded in her faith and family, and we're delighted to welcome all three of these people to the board this year. Kim, I'm gonna let you take the rest of it. Right away. All right, thank you. Um, as always, I just can't say enough about the wonderful volunteers that I work with. They always come through and take care of the folks that need them. Without their dedication and support, our transportation program would be impossible. So thank you to each of you. Um, for those of you who have been to our meetings in the past years, you know that we celebrate those drivers who have been with us for five years. This year, I'm proud to announce that we have two drivers that hit that mark. Bob Gamble came in with the goal to drive for the veteran transportation program. He has crossed over into driving for the county resident program as well. So thank you to Bob. And Jim Conniff has been a driver for Dortran for five years as well. There has not been more than a handful of times when Jim is off hunting or fishing where even a week has gone by without me at least talking to Jim about upcoming trips. This year we hit a milestone. It marks 10 years of the veteran transportation program. There are three drivers that have been with us since the beginning. So I wanna say thank you to John Kakmarinski, Bob Larson and Dan Lindner. Their dedication to Dortran over the past 10 years is what helps keep this program a proven success. Working with each of them has truly been my pleasure. And as long as we're talking about volunteers, let's not forget our office volunteer, Barb. She is amazing and we thank her for all her help. And thank you all. With all that being said, that kind of wraps things up for Dortran's annual meeting. At this time, I just want to once again, thank everyone for coming. If you have any ideas, suggestions, unmet transportation needs, stories, want to sign up to be a volunteer, um, Dortrans phone number 743-9999. Give us a call. We're anxious to hear from you. Um, I appreciate everyone's time and effort coming in today and the uh, 
technology issues that we've had. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. So without further ado, farewell. Enjoy your day. Bye. Thank Thanks, you. Nikki. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. We'll go back to my desk and maybe it was just too many people for my old computer to handle. I've been using it for Zoom for so long.